Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I want to do a watercolor of this sunflower. I picked it up at a farmer's market. And it was actually a roadside farm stand, actually, and I thought it would be kind of fun to draw. I'm going to use a watercolor pencil because I want my lines to be able to dissolve. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with a circle here for the center. I'm using kind of like a pinky purple color. And then I am going to draw some petals and I'm going to go, I like to put my first petals in kind of like a compass, kind of like a, uh, like northeast, southwest, and then Then I kind of just fill in and that just keeps me from having all my petals lean the same way. I know I just did a sunflower and pastel but uh, or a bouquet that had some sunflowers in it but I thought this would be really fun just to kind of do like a long stem plus I had one sheet left in this pad of 6 by 12 paper so I thought this would be just be perfect for using that up and hopefully it'd be a fun watercolor painting to do. And then we've got our stem kind of coming down and I'm just going to let it kind of go off the page. I love that I have this kind of like little uh, bud here. <clears throat> That's one of the reasons I, I chose this flower because it had that little bud. gonna lose part of that leaf sadly but can't fit everything and I'm sure I'm seeing this at a different bit of a different angle than you are because the way it's kind of facing me so another little bud right here Sometimes it's nice to use up the tail end of a, of a, like a pad of paper because, I don't know, it just makes you feel good. Like I used something up. Yay! I don't feel so bad about all the other stuff I've collected. <laughs> and you actually use something. At least that's the way I feel about it anyway. Okay. I think I like that. I don't think I need too much detail. I'm kind of wondering, I was thinking about playing with some uh, really granulating colors. I've got the, um, I got these supervision granulating colors there and I think it might be kind of fun to throw some of those in the background. So I'm just gonna grab that palette here. I'm going to have to kind of shuffle things as I go because I want to be able to keep that in view but I also want to keep my paints in view. My water doesn't need to be in view though. I'll push that off to the side and hopefully, hopefully we can have enough going on. I also have this little palette here that I want to use. It's, um, I bought that set of Schminka when it was on sale. It was the set that has the 12 tubes and it was on sale for like $41. And if it's still on sale, I will link it up. But I mean, it was such a, such an awesome deal that there, I think we, <laughs> I think we can do it. Uh, it was such a good deal that I thought it'd be really, um, it'd be a, it would be just a, a, it would be a missed opportunity not to grab it because I do like Snellier paint. I'm going to use the cat's tongue brush that's in my, and this is a half inch cat's tongue um, from my signature set through Craft Ammo. It's a half inch. If you don't have a cat's tongue, you can use, um, actually you can use a dagger, you can use actually a round, like I would say probably like a number 12 round, something with a good point on it though. And what you want to do is wet the background. Now I'm working on Strathmore 400 series watercolor paper. And I actually like this paper. I will say that sometimes the sizing goes off. So I'm hoping the sizing is still in good shape here. Um, and I'm going to just kind of randomly wet the background. I want to go fairly close to my subject. I'm going to do it in sections though, because it's, it, it, Cellulose paper tends to dry unevenly and kind of quickly, so 
if I work in sections and I should be good. All right, there's some really pretty purples in this set. I think I'm going to go for, uh, let's see, oops, I got my swatch upside down. <laughs> That's not gonna help me. I think I'm gonna go for that one right there. And I'm just gonna kind of touch it into some areas and just let the color flow out. Is this one I was using? I might even give it a spray when I'm done putting the colors. And you can see it already separate a bit. I'm going to wet up here because I feel like I'm losing the uh, diffusion effect. I'm going for a fairly loose representation, especially in the background. I want it to be kind of uh, moody. Uh, maybe I'll try, let's see what other purple would be nice. This purple here maybe. This one's almost got a bit of a grade. Yeah, a little bit of water to it. And I think I'll do some blue. I'll do this one right here. If I didn't bother taping my paper down, it would not be a bad idea to tape your paper down, to be honest. I think we'll give this a little spritz with this like uh, automatic continuous mister. And I'm just going to kind of help it move on the edges a little bit. Sop up a puddle right there. Okay, I'm gonna keep on, I'm gonna wet this area in here. I'm just going area to area so that I don't have to struggle to keep too much of the paper wet at once. I think I want a little bit of red in there or kind of a reddish reddish color. I'm going to try this one here. Some colors flow better than others. I'm going to, I don't like that hard edge there. I want to soften the edge so it just kind of fades out. Hopefully. I think I add a little bit of that red up in there as well. No. Felt like I just wanted to push that color a little bit, but I didn't want to mess with my brush. I didn't want my brush to get in there. <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn this around just so I can focus on wetting this area a little bit better. And then I'm going to put in some more colors. I want this to be kind of intuitive, just kind of, um, it's been a little bit of a stressful day. So it's one of those things you're stressed out but there's nothing you can do about the thing you're stressed out about except wait. And so 
I am going to paint. I downloaded a, a new audiobook. I couldn't believe it was actually available because it's been up. I've been hearing about this book a lot. Uh, it's been really popular. It's called A Man Called Uva, and um, I'm probably like about an hour and a half into it. But I'm like, that'll be just something different to listen to when I walk, as opposed to podcasts. So I'm enjoying it. I almost bought it. I bought the. Uh, I almost bought the book this summer when I was. I don't know. We were we'd gone to Castine for the day, and I was in a little bookshop. But I had so many books kind of on my pile to read that I'm like, oh, I need to finish those first. So I didn't. So I was like, oh, cool. I can check out that book now. I didn't know anything about it. I, I do that a lot. Like people will recommend books, and I'll just um. Especially with the library, because it's like I'm not on any money. I don't feel bad if it's not like my cup of tea, I can abandon it, you know. Um, but I try a lot of books that way, just on recommendation. This color is a little bit heavier to start off with, so I don't, I just don't want to let it get too heavy. And the other purple I used, which one was that? Was it this one? Yeah, I think it was that one. Oh, I'm getting some really nice texture in there. Sometimes you have to coax it a little bit. These are the Supervision granulating colors, available in three packs, three color packs, so um, for like $25, $26 on Amazon. I'll have a review coming up eventually, I just filmed it actually, but they're, they're really fun and I used them to do a bunch of card backgrounds and I just think they'd be, I use the Alta New Coloring Book and I, um, those little card fronts. And I figured that would be really handy to have with me if, like, I'm ever caught waiting somewhere. I could just kind of pull one of those out and work on it. I've also got some, um, I'm thinking about trying some markers on these two, on this for, like, highlights. So we'll see. We'll see what we end up with here. And for the bottom, maybe I'll do some blues and greens. I find that I get a much, well, either a really textured paper or even like a cellulose paper, I get good granulation effects. So I'll try this, uh, oh, I'll try this one's a kind of a weird bluey brown. It looks pretty anemic, but it does have some pretty texture to it. You know what? I think I might actually add some water right into the into the leaves there too, and into this kind of green orange color. But now you can see the texture from that bluish brown color I was telling you about. And it's like the, the mysteries of these colors, or I should say the secrets of them, are revealed once you add water to them, once you thin them down. So I will have to take a break and let this dry in order to get the effects that I want. I'm going to lose some of my drawing because I used a color pen, uh, watercolor pencil instead of a, um, instead of a, like a color race pencil or a graphite pencil.
soak up that puddle. It's funny, you soak up the color, the puddle and then like you'll see colors underneath. Like you see that pretty turquoise color underneath. Plus, I kind of like a fully wet background because I find that it can look really cut and pasted if you paint around subjects. So I kind of want to diffuse things and get things blending in. Kind of want a little bit more red up there. A little bit more of that reddish color. Is it this one? No, it wasn't that one. It was um, this one. I almost want to get some color. Up in the flower. So we are just having fun. We're just having fun with color here. Maybe even flick some color on. I might have to... Oh no, I was thinking I might have to squirt some out from the tube. But it reactivated pretty well. The cat's tongue brush has the faux squirrel hairs on it, so it's very, um, it's very absorbent, so you can do splashes with it, which is nice, I think. It's like when I decided, yeah, I might use all, all, uh, acrylic markers on it, I was like, oh, that means I can go wild with my color, and I like that. Maybe I can use a little bit of this. Gives me permission to play. That's from the original supervision set of 10 colors. My friend Rosie shared hers with me. I didn't buy that set. But I might, I, I enjoy it. It's got some dodgy pigments in it though, so. It's kind of one of those buyer beware. Buyer beware sets, but I still like it. Um. Let's see. Gonna sop up puddles on the edge so I don't get back runs. If I used a bigger piece of paper, I probably would have kind of clustered it in a little, or I would have attempted to. I always tend to fill the space. I'm like a goldfish. I don't like hard edges that much. I prefer soft edges, so. <clears throat> so that's what I'm doing here. Uh, I kind of feel like I would like some of this really crazy blue. What's it called? It's called like lotus leaf or lotus flower or something. I don't know, it's just really crazy. No, I'm not so sure I like that there, but <laughs> but there we are, right? There we are. Let's give a little bit of a lift there. I like that teal underneath. 
But I do think I would like some of that lotus leaf in here. Or at least, oh, that's so pretty. I kind of don't want to mess that up. Uh, just give it a little bit of a form. I hope that's staying on focus. All right, so we're gonna let this dry undisturbed. And then when we come back, we can, uh, we can layer up. I actually think I want a little bit more. Purple up here. Maybe a fresher purple. Is that the one I used? That's kind of bluish. That's not right. Is it that one? No, is it this one? Yeah. As long as the paper's still wet, you can keep playing with it. But once it starts to dry up, then you're gonna uh, you're gonna have some issues. So you gotta let this dry naturally because if you heat dry, you're gonna stop the granulation. Um, if you don't have enough granulation showing yet, if you want, you can mist it. And that almost like it almost acts like salt. It almost like creates a tiny little um, tiny little cauliflowers, which brings you granulation. Anytime you have a puddle, you'll have a cauliflower. If you want, you can spatter in some colors, like, or maybe I'll do some yellow, some of that yellow before, before a little bit more of the yellow before I call it quits as far as drying. And it's all the water that kind of settles in. Um, it lets the pigments float, and that's why you get more of an effect there. So uh, this is gonna dry, and then when we come back, we will go ahead and add, uh, add some more layers, finish it up. It'll, it'll be a while. It'll take a, little, it'll take a while to dry, and it'll take a, a while to finish it, but that's where we're at right now in the hot mess phase. Okay, this is completely dry. Look at this yummy texture here. Isn't that great? So it's already got some interest, right? So um, now what we need to do is just kind of carve the image back out. So I'm gonna take the cat's tongue brush again, and uh, I'm gonna go in with this uh, yellow here. It's kind of like a cad yellow, but I'm not exactly sure the name exactly because I just got that um, that set of Sennelier paints that I put in there. And starting at the tip of the the tip of the petal, I am just going to press and lift. And actually, I think I could do quite a few, and I don't even need to go all the way to the center. And I can add in more petals if I want to. And I've got it fairly watery because I think I'm gonna charge in some other color, some like maybe some of that uh, kind of orangey brown there, that Chinese orange. That actually was, I think, from a try it set that I had of Sennelier. But I was really curious to use these, plus I kind of overfilled the palette, so um, I was afraid that if I didn't use a little bit off, the it was gonna get stuck to the mixing area when I closed it. So you wanna use whatever warm yellow you have. I'm a paint junkie, what can I say? This brush holds quite a bit of um, of paint and water, so I don't have to reload too frequently. And I do intend on trying these this new set of um, acrylic markers, but you don't need to do that. So we've got this outside now. I kind of want to take this um, this orange color. It's a it's a kind of a brownish orange. It's kind of like a Indian red or a burnt sienna. I think it's called, I think it's called Chinese orange. 
Uh, and I'm going to go in from the other way. Just kind of let the colors mingle and then pick up some more paint after I run out. So that way they won't all be the, exactly the same. I don't want to cover up all the yellow. I want them just kind of like uh, merge in together. I guess not really charging it because charging you would do more wet into wet. This is more of a, a kind of a damp on damp. Mostly because I don't want to paint every petal individually. All right, now I think I might actually go back in with a little bit of yellow and uh, a little less water in my brush. Got some glare because it's pretty wet and just kind of blend them. I'm getting almost a uh, an opaque look when I do this. Not, not intentionally. And they'll be less, they'll be more translucent as they dry. But I, I don't want, I, I want them to be a little bit blended. All right, I'm going to put in an edge here. I like what's happening there, so I don't want to cover too much of that up, but I do want to have, let's see what that color is. Oh, that's sepia. I'll use sepia. That's a color I don't use very often. I think what I'll do is just kind of loosely dab it in. Now I have some, actually, I have a, um, I have some uh, Quinn Violet on another palette. I was just uh, kind of adding some colors, some new colors I got to my Mission Gold palette, and I had some of it was taken straight from a tube, so I wanted to um, tone it down a little bit uh, with some water, so it was on the palette. I didn't want to go to waste, so I just grabbed some of that. I'm going to grab some of this uh, olive green which was not in the Sennelier set that I bought, but it was a, a color I had that I really liked that I wanted to that I wanted to add. It's such a pretty color. I might actually throw some salt into that too. I want the edges to kind of fade into the previous wash there. So I'm just adding some water and I'm going to grab my salt. I always keep this stuff so I can grab it. I put it in my hand though. I don't just sprinkle it on because it's hard to control. We'll see. We'll see if that gives me enough of an effect. It might have dried up a little bit too much, but... And we'll see. We'll see what it does. It does something or it doesn't. Not going to worry about it. All right, now we're going to go into our stem. I'll take some of that yellow I was using and some of that olive green. A little bit more of the olive green. A little bit of water. I still have some yellow blue to clean up the other palette, so I'm just going to grab that. Rather than, you know, clean it up for my palette, right? Because otherwise I'll never use it. Do some big juicy 
strokes. Let's add some water in the middle. This brush almost dances. It's just so, it holds so much. That Sennelia paint, I poured that like many, several days ago and it's still so sticky. It's got honey in it, it takes a while to um, it takes a while to dry. I realized I'm not even looking at my reference very much. I'm just kind of like kind of winging it more than anything. Oh, you know what? I want to let that fade out at the bottom. So I'm just going to add some water there and let that just kind of fade off into the ether. I'm going to do the same thing over here too. a little bit stronger at the tip. All right. Now I can go ahead and dry this with my heat tool because there's nothing there that I'm trying to keep some granulating effects for. So I'm going to do that and then we'll come back. All right, guys, I let it dry and um, I kind of hate it, to be honest. I probably, if I wasn't doing a tutorial, I would have give, I would give up on this. I don't like it, but let's see if we can save it because I think that that's really important as far as, uh, as far as, you know, teaching goes. So what I've done is I've grabbed a watercolor pencil. This is a Spectrum Aqua Blend pencil. I have to say, I do like these pencils. I've had them for a couple of years and they're, um, they're in the uh, stand next to my next to my desk. They're um, they're not the finest or most expensive pencil I own. I think they they were pretty affordable at one time. I don't know if they still are or not. Uh, I don't even know if they. St oh, I'm pretty sure they still make them. But they're nice and pigmented, and um, I like using them. So what I'm doing here is putting in some details and trying to get that kind of like brownish orange in the middle just because I feel like it's just such an undefined mess at this point so I'm just going in and sketchily putting in leaves petals good lord um, and then I'm going to this is my plan anyway this is what I thought of when I was thinking oh my word how are you gonna save this Lindsay um, then I'll go in and I'll soften some of the lines out with a wet brush and then I think I will go in with um, some acrylic markers and throw some highlights in. So we kind of have a contrast between the granular texture of the background and some smoothness in the flower. That's my, that's my hope. I'm not feeling this picture. Well, you know what, I'll be honest with you. My, I got a call from my sister this morning that my dad fell again. And so he's at the hospital, I'm waiting to hear so, you know, I don't think I'd be feeling any sort of art right now because I'm just kind of uh, worried and, you know, it's it's really hard to create sometimes, you know. I mean, the time's going to pass either way. There's nothing I can do right now. Um, so, 
you know. Hopefully this will uh, this will pass the time a little bit, right? All right, I'm gonna put some of this green here in the center. I'm also gonna add some of this. I I really like the that little bud, that little bud on the side. It desperately needs some. It needs some detail. And that little bud down there. And it's okay to like move things around so that you like the way it looks more. You know, you want to shift it to the other other side of the uh, of the picture. That's fine. I don't know. I'm just gonna go with my gut on this one. We all have those days, right? But you gotta show up. And you gotta do your thing. And it's a rainy week. It's kind of like the weather is just kind of yuck this week. I guess I shouldn't complain about rain when part of the country's in a drought. So I won't. Or I'll stop, I guess. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck was this leaf connected to? It's just kind of floating. All right, now let's, uh, I'm gonna work on the leaves first. I like the uh, just seeing those loose strokes of color. I think I'll leave that. I like that. Uh, I like seeing the sketchiness in the buds too. Yeah, I think I'll leave that. Now let's see about softening some of the flower petals. I feel like it needs some marks to be visible, but not all of them. Maybe let some of that color bleed into the... The petals there from the center were added a little bit more. Or added a little bit of pencil there. All right, hmm, okay. Let's try that and then I'm gonna go right in with markers because honestly, uh, I think I need to brighten some stuff up. I have too much paint down. I should have left the background more ethereal, maybe painted it smaller, maybe worked on a, a bigger piece of paper. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. <laughs> it, uh, I didn't, that's the, that's the important thing is that I did not do that. So. I'm just drawing the paper because I don't I don't know how these markers are going to do on wet paper. Generally, you don't want to use markers on wet paper. Um, and I wouldn't use an alcohol marker. I'm using a uh, acrylic marker. And I've never used this particular brand before, but I do know they're, they're on sale this for the rest of the month. So uh, if I get this out during September, then that will be good because then you could take advantage of the sale if it's something that you want. These are from Artix. And um, they do come in a nice, a nice package, so the nice thing about that is that you don't have to find something else to store them in. 
Okay, let's see. How about I start with a little bit of stippling in the center with some yellow. And it's a brush tip, so... Ooh, that's nice. I like that. Okay. I should be able to go in when I'm editing and, and uh, zoom in a bit. When I zoom in when I'm filming, sometimes it goes out of focus, so... I don't want to do that. And this is a pastel set. I see there is a black in there, but... Um, but it's a pastel, so I think I'll also, oh wow, look at that, look at how that, that really stands out well. Okay, maybe I'll go ahead and use, okay, I like it better. This is definitely not what I had in my mind's eye when I started out today, but you know what? Sometimes that's the way it goes. The thing I like about these markers, they had another um, another version that I reviewed like a month or two ago on my channel and they were dual ended and uh, but they were more like gouache. They weren't like they weren't they weren't waterproof. So I mean it's cool if that's what you want, but I wouldn't call them like an acrylic marker. Now they're calling them paint markers. I gave them some feedback. And they changed the name to just the paint markers and they they put on their website that they're not or on Amazon that they're not waterproof which is good because that way people won't won't be uh, won't be fooled I'm gonna scribble that off because I did I went over some of the color pencil and if you go over the color pencil with your acrylic marker it will pick it up and stain it um, I'm wondering how this peach might do well, that's quite pink I don't know yeah, that's not going to work for that, but maybe this brown. Oh, it's still pretty light. I don't think I want to use that there, but maybe. Over some of the darker areas if it's too dark. Can soften that up a little bit. Hmm. I'm liking that all right that looks good okay that that works um I wonder how the green will oh it is lighter okay yeah that'll work maybe even I wonder Put some veins in there. Okay. All right, that's all right. I, th I think because it's subtle enough. And because, oops, because it has a brush tip, it is pretty intuitive. I think I, I really need to go lighter if I want to do veins on those. Maybe like this color here. That might be a better vein color. Just need to be a little bit more sure of myself there in my lines because the light, lighter color is going to show up more against that Let the darker color can add some highlights in there. Uh, did I use this color? Oh no, I even have more lighter colors. Like, did I, oh no, I think I did use that color. Did I? No, I think I used the brighter yellow. Let's try that light yellow on some of the tips. Oh wow, it almost looks white. I 
guess I didn't realize how dark I got with my painting, how with how light. This pale yellow. It's almost like a cream. It's kind of like a kind of like a cream ivory color. I don't think I'm that crazy about the uh, front-on view of this, but it is what it is for now. Okay, I think that, is that going to do it? Maybe some of this? Let's see what that color looks like. This color might be, it's too light, but I'll add it a few places because I've already thrown some in there. Yeah, these definitely are pastels. And they're actually quite opaque. They're standing up pretty well on this. And you don't need to activate them. And they shouldn't clog. That's the problem that I have with markers. I don't use I don't use markers enough so that um Yeah, look at that gray. That gray is still pretty light. Uh I don't use markers enough that I can keep them working generally. That's the black. I don't really need it. Do I want black in there? I don't know. I don't think I really need it, but we can give it a try anyway to see what this marker's like because I'm not uh I'm not in love with this artwork, so I don't really have much to lose. Not much odor. I thought I smelled odor, but I don't think I did. Uh, yeah, that's so that's so strong. I don't think I want any more of the black. I'm in fact gonna kind of tone it down. You know, the lighter color covers it would cover over the black completely. That's good to know if you make a mistake. With that, I think I'm gonna call it done. Um, and honestly, I don't even know if I'm gonna post the video, but there you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, uh, it was fun to play with the granulating colors. It just didn't come out as, as well as I wanted to, but hey, that's how it goes sometimes. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy my videos. Until next time, happy crafting.